Revelation chapter 12. Amen. Praise God. God, I've heard you. I have heard you. I've seen you. Amen. I've heard you and I've seen you. I've heard you and I've seen you, my people. I have heard I have heard you and I have seen. Amen. Your cry. I've heard you and I've seen your trouble. I have heard you and I've seen your Allah what you're going through. Revelation chapter 12 says, and there appear a great wonder in heaven. Speak, Holy Ghost, thy servant here at thee, Jesus. Speak, Lord. Push again. That's the word this morning. Push again. That's the word this morning. Push again. Hallelujah. Share tag and put the title of the message when you share it. Put push again. Hallelujah. Put rise and command your day in parentheses and put push again. That's the topic for somebody. I don't know who you are, but I'm going to break it down for you. Push again. Hallelujah. Push again. Hello, Shanda. And there appear a great wonder in heaven uh, hallelujah a great wonder now you gotta look at the location you gotta look at the location where this is taking place uh, you gotta look at the location where this is happening because sometimes sister Sydney we're doing everything for God uh, sometimes sister Sydney amen praise God Almighty amen we're in the presence of the Lord amen sometimes we're going to church Church, as normal sister Cheryl Smith uh, hallelujah glory God amen sometimes sister Marlene amen we're praying and fasting amen 21 days of fasting seven days of fasting amen three days of fasting and we're fasting and we're seeking God amen sister Nicola amen amen we fast amen we pick up every single fasting we pick up the Daniel fasting uh, amen we pick up all kind of fasting Fasting. Amen. And we're saying, God, Elabo Shanda, I need you in the, in the midst of this. Amen. You gotta understand. I, I'm starting with Revelation chapter 12, verse 1 said, and there appear. Amen. The word appear means something presented itself. The word appear means that it was not there, Pastor Bryce, but somewhere out of the midst. Oh, somewhere out of amen. It appears it appears amen it happens glory to god you were not expecting this but it happened hallelujah you were not expecting this to happen at this time but it happened hallelujah hallelujah i don't know who i'm speaking to in the prior room it happened it just appear amen it just come out of the blues accident it just come sickness it just come you are doing well you are what you all got every Everything was all right, but it just appear. This trouble just appear. This trial just appear. This pain in my body just appear. I cannot explain it. I can't. Have you ever been in a situation? Come on, y'all, talk back to me. Amen. Have you ever been in a situation? Amen. Where you something just happened? It just came out of nowhere. Unexpected. Hallelujah. Issues in your life uh, unexpected problems in your life uh, unexpectedly somebody walk away uh, unexpectedly somebody amen start to rise up against you unexpectedly mashanda uh, unexpectedly something just pop up uh, ah this is i know this word ain't gonna be for everybody uh, but i have some people in the prior room uh, that god is speaking to this morning uh, amen unexpectedly uh, unexplainable something arise in your life something arise in your children life and you're saying I don't know what this is where this come from when this started when did this happen unexpectedly something come and glory to God what has hit you what has hit you this morning is something that literally comes as if it is paralyzing you amen it's blocking your flow all of a sudden when you thought things were gonna change when you thought things were going to shift in your favor when you thought you were just getting on your feet when you thought speak holy ghost somebody need this word when you thought hallelujah I feel the anointing thank you holy ghost you thought 
thought, hallelujah, that your business was going to lift up off the ground now. You thought it's my turn now. You thought you saw a little dim of light. You saw a little dim of the light of God. You saw a little breakthrough. Amen. You saw a little light. You've been going through the tunnel for a very long time. This tunnel that you've been going through has been a long, seemingly a long tunnel. Hallelujah to God. It's been dark for a very long time. It's been teary for a very long time. The tears has been coming for a very long time. Brokenness for a very long time. Broken home for a very long time. Broken heart for a very long time. And you thought you were right there. You saw a little bit of the light. Amen. And you thought I'm getting out, out of it now. I'm about to transition out of this tunnel now. Hallelujah to God. But you got a shanda. Somewhere something else just hit you. Oh God. In a shanda Something just hit you out of the blues. Something just hit you my God. And you're wondering what in the world is this? Why is where is this coming from? What now Jesus? I want to talk to some real people that's in the prayer room this morning. Preaching, praising, singing, worshiping, testifying, witnessing. But while you're doing it, something appears in your life. And you're saying, what is going on, God? What am I going to do now? Where do I turn now? I have exhausted every option. I've turned everywhere. Mentally, I'm tired. Mentally, I feel like my mind, I'm about to look. Can I speak to some real people? Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. I couldn't wait till 6 o'clock to deliver this word. But I'm about to give birth to something. Somebody can't wait till 6 o'clock for this word somebody could not wait for God to lead me to prayer and then get in the word somebody want to give birth now tell somebody you gonna have to push again mighty God of Zion you're saying God what no my God where this come from no I am tired mentally I feel like I'm gonna lose my mind every morning I get up I get up worrying every morning I get up I get up crying every day I get up it's another tears where did this come from emotionally I'm tired I'm drained emotionally I'm drained physically I'm drained spiritually mentally oh God hallelujah to God and there appear a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet upon her head a crown of 12 stars and she being with child cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered oh my god this is where i'm sent to. i know it, i know it's ain't for everybody hallelujah to god but this is where i'm sent to this morning i gotta read this again and there appear, there appear huh? a wonder in a great, great wonder in heaven. Huh? A woman clothed with the sun huh? and the moon, glory to God, under her feet. Huh? And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. Huh? Who am I referring to? I'm referring to the Lord. Huh? Hallelujah, glory to God. And she being with child she's amen she is with child she is amen carrying something on the inside she amen is with child she is amen possessing something inside of her amen something amen great is inside of her something sister Doreen amen she is with something amen and sometime at the darkest part of your life amen is when light is about to come Amen. Breakthrough is a come. Amen. The darkest part of your life huh, will be just the moment huh, where God is getting ready huh, to intervene. Huh, where God is getting ready. Huh. Hear me, somebody. Huh, sometime at the darkest point huh, of your life, huh, you're closer to a breakthrough huh, than you can imagine. Huh. But when you're in the darkest place of the night, huh, when you're in the darkest place of your life, huh, you can't see. 
see this birthing thing. Uh, you, the Bible said, uh, and she being with child, uh, cried, travailing in birth uh, and in pain uh, to be delivered, uh, to be delivered, uh, to be delivered, uh, to be delivered. Uh, that means she was getting ready, uh, amen, to bring forth something. Uh, she's already in pain. Uh, she's already crying. Uh, she's already travailing, Sister Marlene. Uh, amen. Some of you have been travailing, uh, and it ain't even for yourself. Uh, some of you have been travailing uh, in prayer, uh, travailing in fasting, uh, and it ain't about you. Uh, amen. Some of you have been travailing. Uh, tears have been running down your eyes. Uh, snot has been coming out of your nose. Uh, you've been in travail. Uh, you've been travailing for somebody uh, that you deeply love. Uh, you've been travailing. Uh, hallelujah. Carrying the burden uh, for somebody else. Uh, hallelujah. And some of you, you've been travailing for yourself. Uh, either way, you have something. Uh, amen. And there is pain. Uh, when you are giving birth, uh, there is always pain. Uh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, and some of you are right there. Uh, you're right about the place now. Uh, the Bible said she uh, in travail, in birth and pain to be delivered. Huh? In other words, it's going to happen. Huh? Amen. But you're in the process. Huh? It's going to happen. And somebody may say, well, I've heard this message before. Huh? I've heard it before. Huh? Well, this is what God give me. And amen. I got to tell somebody this morning. She's the Bible said this woman. Amen. Amen. While she was there in heaven. Amen. She was travailing. She was in pain. Amen. To be delivered. I don't know who is in the prayer room this morning, huh? but you're about to deliver. Huh? Deliverance is coming your way. Huh? Something is going to happen. Huh? Hallelujah. But why? Just because huh? the enemy don't attack for nothing. Huh? The enemy don't try to stop you. Huh? Amen. When the affliction come, huh? the affliction, the fight. Hello, somebody. The fight is the evidence huh? that something great is is about to happen huh? the more the pain increase huh? it is the evidence huh? that God is getting ready huh? amen to bring you out huh? I know it's been hot huh? the battle is hot huh? the conflict is going on huh? mighty God of Zion huh? but she was about to give birth huh? she was about to bring forth huh? she was about to deliver huh? now I want you to watch this huh? because I'm gonna show you the other side of it huh? and then I'm gonna flip it again glory to God huh? and there appear another wonder in heaven huh? Amen. Watch this. Verse 3, Pastor Bryce. I'm in Revelation chapter 12. Please share. Amen. It says, and there appear another wonder. Is there anybody in the prayer room? Amen. That had another thing happen. Is there, is there anybody in the prayer room? That, amen, something else just arise upon you. Is there any prayer, anybody that was having a good, amen, month last month and something else just happen huh? something else appear huh? amen the bible said huh? and there appear another wonder in heaven huh? and behold a great red dragon huh? having seven heads huh? and ten horns huh? and seven crown upon his head huh? and his tail drew the third part of the stars huh? in other words glory to God huh? I'm in Revelation chapter 12 huh? and now I reach verse Verse 4, watch this. Huh? And the Bible said, huh? and his tail huh? drew huh? the third part of the stars of heaven. Huh? Oh, God Almighty, can you imagine? Huh? Amen. The disruption. Huh? Can you imagine? Huh? Everything was organized. Huh? If anybody on the prior room is like me, huh? I am very detailed. Huh? And I like things in order. Huh? I'm very organized. Huh? And 
I like to have my ducks in a row. I like to have my things strategically planned out. If anybody in the prior room that is like me, I like to know what my next move is. I always have a plan. I always have the next idea. I always try to come up with another plan. Amen. Just in case. But sometimes, hallelujah, when you're walking with the Lord, amen, there are things that will appear out of nowhere that just shift everything in your life. Is there anybody that feel this morning that things have fallen out of place? You have set up strategically some things in line, but there was a shift in your life that messed up your mind and you don't know where else to turn. Is there anybody? Hallelujah. You thought you had the entire year figure out. Amen. You know that by this time this month, you would be somewhere else. You thought by this time this month, amen, you'd be in a greater place. You thought by this time this month, your business would have lifted from off the ground. You thought by this time your green card would have been in the mail. But something happened. There was a red dragon, hallelujah, that come and drew the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Hallelujah, something shifted. My God, something got out of place. Chaos appear in your life. Trouble appear in your life. Trials appear out of nowhere. Somebody, Baba Bashande, your marriage start to come like this. Amen. Your children start to act like this. Oh God, something got shift and you can't understand what's going on. Amen from Zion. Hallelujah to God. But God, hallelujah, hear a word from heaven this morning. And the word is push again. The Bible said the dragon stood before the woman. Hallelujah. Which was ready to be delivered for to devour the child as soon as it's come. Can I tell somebody this? I want to read this scripture a little bit slower because somebody needs to understand why you're dealing with what you're dealing with. Let me read verse 4 again. Or tell your neighbor. I know you can't see them, but you can see their name. Just tell somebody in the prior room. Say, push again, daughter Zion. Push again, son of God. Oh, Lord, this is a spiritual thing. Amen. I know man can't be pregnant in the natural, but a man can be pregnant in the spiritual. What am I talking about? Revelate, Holy Ghost. Do y'all remember Adam? Adam was in the garden. Adam didn't know what was in him until God put him to sleep and caught his side and he brought Eve out of him. I know a man can't be pregnant in the natural because it's not logical. It's not like that. But a man can be pregnant. Oh God, in the remedy, oh, in the spiritual. Oh, Adam was pregnant with Eve. Hello, Boshanda. Adam had to get caught. So Eve got to come forth. And sometimes if you're like me, amen, when you get caught, it hurt real bad. When you get caught, it hurt real bad. It's an intensified pain because something is open up. And some of y'all been caught. Rabba But you're about to bring forth my God from Zion. Tell somebody this morning. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Oh, my scream is real quiet this morning. Push again. Push again with that vision. Push again with your ministry. Push again with your business. Push again and go back to school. Somebody, you got to push again. I know it hurt, but push again. Oh God, I know it's hard, but push again. I know you're crying, but push again. Lord, it's not over. I dare you to push again. I hear you. Oh God, one 
one word from heaven this morning, Pastor Bryce. The word said push again. Hallelujah to God. You thought you were Shanda. And no Adam thought that nothing was inside of him. And no Adam thought that he only came to till the ground. Oh God, but there's something greater on the inside of you. When Adam appeared in the garden, Adam thought his only job was to till the garden. But God said, Adam, there's something inside of you that I got to get out of you. Is there any Adam in the prayer room? Your pain is intensified. Your money done gone funny. Your bank account is almost empty. You feel like you're going to lose your mind. God said you got to push again. Adam didn't know what was in him. Adam didn't know that what he was carrying on the inside of him was about to bring forth nations. Who the Holy Ghost preaching to this morning. I say Adam didn't know that something greater. I said Adam was walking around. Sister Latoya. He was walking in the garden. Preach Holy Ghost. Thy servant hear at thee. Adam was walking in the garden. Adam didn't know that he was carrying something on the inside. I've got to reiterate this again. Oh God, a man cannot get pregnant in the natural realm. It's impossible because God did not create it like that. But how many of us know this morning that everything happened in the spirit realms before it manifests in the natural. Oh Lord Jesus. So God said, wherever I got to cut you, I'm going to cut you to get it out. Adam could not push because he didn't have the ability to push and bring forth a child like that. But God said, Adam, I got to cut you on the side. Oh Lord Jesus, because you're pregnant in the spirit and what you got in you is going to be able to bring forth nation. What you got inside of you, who am I preaching to? You got the anointing inside. You got nation inside. There is a prophet inside. There is a pastor inside. There is an evangelist inside. There is a teacher inside. Oh Lord, I got to get her out. God said to tell you, I'm trying to get something out of you. I know the pain is hurt. And if there's any woman in here that have ever been through a C-section, when you get caught, amen, for that baby to come out after that, oh God, Shanda, the cut hurt real bad, but I gotta get it out. The birthing process is hard. My God, but I gotta get it out. Lord God, this make you cry, but I gotta get it out. It's making you scream, but I gotta get it out. You're holding your head, you feel like you're losing your mind, but I gotta get it out. Push at Bashatai. God said, I gotta get it out of you. I know it's been up and down. You burn on the hill and you've been in the valley, but I gotta get it out. You've been weeping all night, but I gotta get it out. You've been pulling out your ear, but I just gotta get it out. Lababashanda, what you're going through, it ain't for naught, Suzette. It's God. It's God trying to get it out of you. Something is on the inside. While Adam was walking in the garden, he was comfortable, but he didn't know he was carrying something. Ah, God, nobody around him knew he was carrying something. Ah, But when the fullness of time was come, God said, Adam, I know you don't have a natural womb, but you got a spiritual womb. You got the ability to bring forth a nation. He said, lay down, let me cut you. Hallelujah to God. Can I speak as God lead me? Sister Latoya, if God had cut Adam while he was busy working in the, oh God. Somebody had a shift in their life. If God had cut Adam, hallelujah, while he was working. If God had cut Adam.
Adam ha, while he was tiling in the garden. Ha, if God had cut Adam ha, while Adam was still in the ground, ha, my God, can you imagine how that cut could have been? Ha, hallelujah, God could have been cutting him. Ha, and because he moved, ha, the, the knife went this way. Ha, God could have been trying to cut the side alone. Ha, but if he was tiling and working, ha, he could shift. And when he shift, ha, he would shift out of place. Ha, and because he shift out of place, ha, amen, the knife could have cut him the wrong way. Ha, oh God, it could have cut him this way. Ha, when it should only go this way. My God, ha, some of you need to be still in giant. Ha, some of you need to be still in God. Ha, because God said, I'm trying to get something out of you. Ha, but every time I put you through the test, ha, you run to somebody else for help. Ha, sit still. Ha, I hear the Bible said, ha, be still ha, and know that I am God. Ha, I will be exalted. We're in the earth. Ha, I will be exalted inside of you. Ha, Latoya, I'm not finished with you yet. Ha, I got to get glory out of you. Ha, amen. Latoya, I'm not finished with you yet. Ha, you're transitioning to another level. Ha, and God said, because you're transitioning, ha, the burden pain increase. Ha, I don't know what's going on in your life ha, to the full extent, Latoya. Ha, but God said, don't shift. Ha, let me get it out of you. Ha, can you imagine Adam ha, moving and twisting and turning ha, while God is cutting him? Ha, oh God, can you imagine ha, in the natural world ha, when a woman is going to give birth by cesarean? Ha, amen. They put her down on a bed. Ha, amen. She cannot move. Ha, hallelujah, Sister Doreen. Ha, she can't move ha, because the doctor needs you to be still. Ha, be still this morning ha, until I tell you the push. Ha, be still until I tell you to move. Ha. Oh God, I'm doing a work inside of you. Ha. You don't know what I'm doing. Ha. Yandala washanda. Ha. You don't understand, but I'm working a work. Ha. So the Bible said, God ha, put Adam to sleep. Ha. Oh Lord Jesus, ha. because it is delicate. Ha. It's a delicate situation. Ha. Mighty God Almighty. Ha. And I got to get it out. Ha. But in the midst of it all, ha, I got to make you still. Ha. Stop moving up and down. Ha. Stop kicking and, oh God, ha. stop kicking and moving. Ha. I said, God is trying to complete something in you. Ha. Be still under the Holy Ghost. Ha. Be still under the elbow. Shut up. Be still. Ha. Now watch this because this stillness means huh, that you gotta be in the right place huh? this stillness means huh, that you gotta be in the will of God huh? because can you imagine huh, Adam out of the garden huh? it is in the garden huh, that God would visit Adam huh, in the cool of the day huh? now can you imagine huh, if God had came and Adam was out of place huh, when it was time to deliver Eve huh? can you imagine huh, if Adam was not there huh? Oh God, can you imagine? Huh? Let me tell you this. Huh? A woman don't give birth. Huh? When it's birthing time, huh? and the, amen, the, amen, when the contraction begin to hit you, you better find a hospital huh? because it's a delicate situation. Huh? And if God don't perform it for you, huh? if the wrong person perform it, huh? my God, it could be a catastrophe. Huh? If the wrong person is in your life, huh? pouring in your life, huh? oh God, who am I preaching to? Huh? If it's the wrong person huh, performing the surgery huh, that they're not qualified to perform, huh, you're going to get hurt huh, in the midst of it all. Huh? Can you imagine? Can you imagine if God had come huh, and Adam was outside of the garden? Huh? Can you imagine if God had come huh, and said, Adam, Ashanda, now watch this. I want to revelate it, but I don't know why God take me there, but I got to revelate it. So I'm going to slow it down. Need about shaking the video, sire. Adam was put in the garden. I'm going to go back to Revelation 12, but I, I, I must jump over to, amen, back, amen, dodobo shata. Ikondo rebeka soto robo dodobo shaya. 
anda da basoto. It was in chapter one of Genesis that God said, "Let us make man in our own image, after our likeness, and let them, let them." Now, now you gotta get the revelation. Now, can I slow it down? Let me just posture myself. Tell it, tell somebody, posture is everything. I want you to tell somebody your posture is everything. Your position in God, amen. That that don't mean a title. That means how you position yourself in God. Whether you're positioned at the altar, whether you're positioned in the house of God, whether you're positioned in prayer, whether you're positioned in fasting, your position now is everything because when a woman is getting ready to go and give birth, if it's a cesarean or she got a push, she got to be in the right position. That means she got to lay down. When a person is laying down, amen, they're in a position where they become helpless. Amen. When a person is laying down, amen, when you lay down, it makes you more limited. When you lay down, it puts you in a position, amen, where, amen, seemingly, good morning, Julie, katababo, shut up. When a woman is laying down, praise God, uh, amen, she is then placed in a position, uh, amen, where she becomes a little bit helpless, uh, amen, praise God, she is now relying on the doctor and not herself, uh, right now she knows she's in, amen, a birthing place, uh, right now she knows, uh, amen, that where she is, uh, amen, she needs to be in the right place posture amen to bring forth that baby so she will position herself in the right way position is everything tell somebody y'all better talk back to me this morning if you flow with me then the holy ghost gonna keep on flowing if you're in the right position sister Anne maria amen glory to god you will give birth when a woman is giving birth she knows amen that she's in labor somehow somewhere you just know that you're in labor you know something is coming forth good god almighty so when she start to feel the contraction her first senses that came on is get me to the hospital room get me in the hospital because if i go there there's everything that i need in the hospital room to bring forth my child the oh god almighty the epidural is in the hospital room it is not at your house mando shata oh god the equipment the monitor the art monitor machine uh, that is monitoring not only your heartbeat uh, but the baby's heartbeat uh, is in the hospital room uh, the monitor that they gotta monitor amen uh, the breathing technology of the child uh, to make sure the child is breathing right uh, and they're not losing that child in the midst of birthing time uh, it's in the hospital some of us ain't never go to church uh, some of us don't don't go to church no more but i want to tell you you need to shift your position because everything that you need is actually in the house no wonder jesus said where two or three is touching and agreeing he said i'm in the midst so when you stay home alone the bible does that that doesn't come in alignment with the scripture you're out of order oh preach holy ghost when you stay home alone and say I'm not going to church today I don't want to go to church no more I don't want to be among those people no more you got to understand that it's among those people that you find the doctor to do the delivery it is among those people that you find the nurses amen to come in the room and check on you to make sure everything is functioning properly until it's time to push because when you're giving birth amen be to god you don't just push and the baby come you go through a process you go through the contraction
medicine, huh, which bring you to the labor room, huh, which is at the hospital. Huh? Can I flip it in the spirit? Huh? When you're giving spiritual birth, huh, you got to get in the church huh? because some of you don't have, oh God, huh? you can't give birth by yourself. Huh? Good God Almighty, who huh? shandle of Hosiah. Huh? Oh God, it's in the birthing room huh? that the right equipment, huh? they can't use a knife huh? that they use in the kitchen, Sister Doreen. Huh? They can't use that knife on you. Huh? If they're giving you a cesarean, huh? they need to have the right knife, huh? the right equipment to cut you huh? so you don't get cut the wrong way. Huh? So if you, oh God, huh? if you stay home and think the knife in the kitchen can do it, huh? you better think again. Huh? Tell somebody huh? when a woman is in contraction, huh? she begin to call her husband. Huh? She say, honey, my water is broken. Huh? Get me in the hospital room huh? because they have what it takes huh? to help me get this thing out of me. Huh? Is there a prophet in the house? Huh? Is there a pastor in the house huh? that is there to help you to give birth? Huh? Then why are you home huh? in contraction? Huh? Why are you home huh? in pain? Huh? What a good God, hear this. Let me share this with you. And God said in Genesis 1, verses 26, I need you to catch this. I rub a baba shandala baho satala bahai. Ah, God Almighty, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Somebody give him thanks right now. Thank, thank him for this revelation right now. Thank him, thank him. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Watch this. The next word. Watch it. And let them have. Now underline them, Sister Latoya. Let them. I'm not even gonna go to Dominion let them now watch this god said let us make man in our image sister Anne marie and let them but i thought when god made man bible said and out of the ground in chapter 2 out of the ground chapter 2 verses 9 and out of the ground made the lord god amen uh, wait, wait let me back up Verse 7, and the Lord God formed man. Now, let's revelate. Let's revelate. Let's teach. Can I teach? Chapter 1, verse 26 says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them. T-H-E-M means more than one. Let them and I'm not going to go to dominion. I'm just going to jump to verse chapter 2 and verse 7. And huh, the Lord God formed man. That's M-A-N. Sister Latoya. That means one. Not M-E-N. M-E-N is man. It means more than one. It means, amen, amen. Not a gender, but more than one people. Somebody need to talk back to me. Y'all real still. M-E-N means more than one, right? If M-E-N means more than one and it's not dealing with a gender, it's dealing with male or female. Come on, we all went to English class. Some of y'all just graduated from college. Hallelujah. Then if God said in chapter 2 of genesis verses 7 and the lord god formed man m-a-n that means one right so then in chapter 1 verse 26 and the lord god said let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them let them mean more than one that simply mean that when God created Adam, God knew that Adam had Eve inside of her. But it was a time yet to bring forth Eve. What am I saying? Good God, there's something inside of you that is greater beyond your imagination. Something is inside of you that is going to impact this world. Something is on the inside of you. But when 
the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son. 42 generations. He could have come when Adam was birthed. He could have come when Abraham showed up. He could have come, Mama Shanda, when Jacob showed up. He could have come when Isaac showed up. He could have come when Ruth showed up. He could I am a Sunday. Oh God, who am I preaching to? He could have come then. But it's not time yet. But in the midst of the process, you gotta be in position. Tell somebody, get in position. Get in the house. Get in the church. Why you home? Sleeping on the bed. Get up. Go to church. Something is inside of you. Now let me break down. I'm, I'm, I'm yelling. I'm sorry. I'm screaming. Oh God. He could about shut up. Man could about shy. My husband asked me, glory to God. He said, you don't need a mic. Amen. Because you sound real loud. But it, it's the passion, y'all. I get real passionate about the word. It could talk about sandal God put me on Facebook Live to revelate to his people. I'm ordained on this. I'm not here for your money. I'm not here to trouble you. I'm here to revelate what God said to you. When the full of time come in other words be still watch this now watch it you gotta catch it all right so God made man now hallelujah to God now watch this all right let's see can we walk through it now in the same chapter 2 if you jump over to verse 15 and the Lord God do you realize that all this time it's God doing it, Sister Anne-Marie? All of this time it's God. Every time you read, God did, God formed, God made, God, it's God. Then we go to 15 and the Bible said, and the Lord God, God, who is doing it? God doing it. Tell somebody God doing it. God doing it. It's not me. God doing it. And the Lord God took man. Put him into the garden of Eden to dress it. He put him in the garden. Now, now if you go back to Psalms 24, the Bible said, Amen. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Now, if everything in the earth, if the earth is the Latoya belong to God, why God created a garden? Why God created a garden to put man when the entire world was there? Why did God created a garden? When God honed the entire world. Tell somebody. Because it's all about position. Not, I'm not talking about the title now where everybody are run down. I'm not talking about the prophet. The prophet is here. The prophet is in town. No, no, no. Jesus is here. Anytime you see people bigging up themselves. Talk about the prophet is here. And the prophet is the prophet. Get out of your flesh. Jesus is here. God created the garden for his purpose all the world but god said i'm creating a garden because when i put you in the right place and when you're in the right place at the right time anything can happen hallelujah to god i don't know who god is talking to this morning but every time you stay home and not go to the house of God and you have the ability to get there you are blocking your own blessing tell somebody you're not troubling nobody this I'm gonna play don't you trouble Zion if y'all don't talk back to me hear me you gotta be in position until you get to the hospital where the right things are to give birth, it ain't going to happen. You're going to stay in contraction. Hallelujah to God. God created the garden then, right? Amen. Praise God. Can I teach it? God created the garden. Why didn't he put Adam outside the garden? Now, I'm going to show you this. Speak Holy Ghost. If when Adam sinned, the Bible said God put Adam outside of the garden. That means there was somewhere else that Adam could have been, but Adam was in the right place. There's something else that Adam could be doing, but God created the garden because there's a reason for it. 
Now God put Adam in the garden and said, dress it. Now, watch this. Adam was in the garden. And in the garden, Adam began to get revelation, Sister Allison. Adam began to get some things downloaded in his spirit. Adam began to get what Paul prayed for. Let this mind be in me that was also in Christ Jesus. Adam, what do you want to call this one? Adam said, that's a bird, God. Okay, Adam, you're on point. Adam, what do you call that four-legged beast? Adam said, that's a dog, Jesus. Okay, God said, well, Adam, yes, here you go. You get it right again. Had Adam not been in the garden, he wouldn't. Do you think Adam knew that he was a dog? No, 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 no. Adam had the uh, the faculty, the ability, the knowledge, the mind of Jesus Christ. So when Adam said that's a dog, God said yes, because Adam was at the right place in God's will to hear from God. Some of us want to hear from God, but we're not in position. No more shut up. And some of them dare, some of them dare to come on here and tell you that God is speaking every day, that God is saying nothing every day. Well, according to my Bible, God came in the cool every day and talked to Adam. So if you ain't hearing from God or you think God don't speak all the time, you're in the wrong place. So watch what happened. Melibo, shut up. He said, Adam, what is this thing? Adam said, that's amen. That's a fish, Lord. He said, good boy. You're learning. You got the mind of Christ. But had Adam been out, nah, hallelujah. So much revelation. I don't know what to do. Then do you realize, Sister Latoya, that when Adam got out of the garden, there was a shift? He didn't know what everything was anymore. Could it be, God, that I'm in the wrong place? Could it be, God, that I'm not in position? Could it be, God, that I step out of the right place where you had me to get the revelation, where you had me to get a word? I'm chasing down everybody to get a word. But, God, could it be that if I was in the right place, I would get a word from the Lord? Now, watch this, somebody. So, Adam begin to name everything. Uh, what time is it? My time is running out. Adam begin to name everything according to the will of God. Now watch this. When Adam Ashatanabahosai begin to name everything, he was walking with God. Then when the fullness of time come, amen, Adam didn't know that there was a them. Something else was inside of him. So when the time come that when God speak, now you gotta catch this. The Bible said in Genesis 1 verses 6, 26 that God said, let us create them. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 that God formed man. That means he formed one person. But that don't mean that what God speak in the beginning concerning my life will never come to pass. It will come to pass. I just got to get in position. I just got to get in the right place. I just got to get in the right posture. Amen. Oh God Almighty. So in chapter 2 now, amen. Praise God. God, the Bible said that God in verse 21, amen, God said, I'm in chapter 2 now, verses 21, God said, and the Bible said, and the Lord God, who do it again? Who did it again? Who did it again? Oh, it's a pastor, why I ain't going to church? Prophetess did me wrong, so I ain't going to church. Amen. The evangelist speak wrong to me, so I ain't going to no church. Amen. The apostle, amen, talk bad about me. So I ain't going to no church. Amen. Glory to God. Who is the Lord talking to? You blaming everybody not to go to church. But you're just doing the wrong thing. Because I've been reading from verse chapter 1. And in everywhere I read, I keep hearing God. God do it. God said it. God, 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 God. You blaming the wrong person. So now the Bible said, I'm teaching. I'm teaching. How the boy shot. Some of y'all need to sow into this word because you ain't even getting this in your church. You need to sow. Yes, Lord, watch this. Now, amen, praise God. This is the reason why God would have you to sow seed 
in a man or a woman of God life. Do you know why? Because you can't see God. God is a spirit. So God needs a body to use. So God wake me up five, four after four to get ready and come in here and, and, and position myself. Watch this. If y'all catch this, do you know? Amen. Oh God. Sister Latoya, when you went to give birth to your baby, as nice as you dress all the time, did you have on a eels? Did you have on your nice dressing clothes? Amen. Did you put your color line together? When you give him birth, you don't care about no color. You don't care about no clothes. Amen. Praise God. Do you not know that when a woman is going to give birth, she got to change the clothes she wear to the hospital. She got to put on her, her, her birthing garment. Oh, good God. Help me. Holy Ghost. Ah, God Almighty. She had to put on her birthing clothes. Huh? Amen. Y'all know y'all ladies talk back to me. Huh? You got to put on a special garment. Huh? When you're getting ready to give birth, huh? you can't put on, amen, your regular clothes that you've been wearing. Amen. Oh, God Almighty. Did you know Jesus used the natural to bring out the spiritual all the time? Amen. This is real good. Somebody need to download this, put it on a CD and get it to me. Amen. Praise God. When a woman is giving birth, she got to change her very birth in garment. Hallelujah to God. So, amen. Sometimes when you see me coming here in the same clothes, same dress, amen, it's clean and wash, but I had to change it. I had to shift. Amen. Because God said, that's what I want you in. That's how I want you. And then I got in position, amen, to hear what God said. It is so crazy that even the very garment that you wear has something, oh, good, I don't want to go there this morning. So watch this, somebody. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep. Oh, rabba, shanda, rabba, higher. Woo! Holy Ghost. And the Lord God caused, God is doing it, a deep sleep to fall and Adam. Because when you're going to give birth on a birthing table, or in the, oh God, help me, Holy Ghost. This is so much, it's so good. Sister K, do you not know that, amen, when a woman is getting ready to give birth in the hospital, amen, they don't even have a regular bed. There's a special birth in bed. Oh, God, for her to position herself. Tell somebody, position is everything. And it's not talking about titles. It's talking about the life that you're living, the place where you're sitting. Mama, ma, shando, robo, bobo, she has to then have herself do julia at the right place on the right bed position a certain way because she getting ready to give birth oh ba shata rana nana mando do bo shata ba haya kuturu mando do bo shata i want to share amen the very theme that God gave me for the conference of 2019. The theme that God gave me, I, I want to share it with you. The flyers coming soon. The theme that God gave me, He said, Tell them, eagles, it's time to soar. I just land the title, the theme for conference next year. Oh, good God Almighty. God is getting ready to lift somebody to another place. Oh, good God Almighty. Position is everything. Position is everything. If you're not in position, you're going to hurt yourself and the baby. I'm talking about no spiritual baby now. I'm talking about your posture to your destiny. I'm talking talking about the pastor giving birth to your ministry good god almighty adam was put in a deep sleep need everybody to share this word those of you that came on late please go back to the beginning i didn't even get to pray and somebody push on god pull on god he was falling bible god like bible jesus bible can't lose that Bible yet, no. Oh, I gotta rip. I, I gotta get back a small Bible like that. Oh, la ba shanda la Good God Almighty, God caused Adam to go into a deep sleep. Why, God, did you put him in a deep sleep? 
Now, if you want to look and break this reel down real good, when you go into a deep sleep, you're not conscious of what you're doing. Have you ever wake up beside somebody and they said to you, you were talking in your sleep last night. You were speaking in tongues in your sleep last night. You are not conscious. You're not fully aware of what's going on. So God said, Adam, uh, I'm gonna put you in, I'm gonna put you under. I'm gonna put you into a deep sleep. Sister K, don't mess with my message, you know. Hallelujah. Sister K, you messing with the title already. Oh, you're messing with the theme. You got to come for this conference. I tell you, we're going to fly. We're going we to soar. We ain't flying. Chicken fly. We're going to soar. Anyway, I go back to here. He said, Adam, I'm going to put you in a deep sleep. Because what I'm getting ready to get outside of you, if you are kicking, if you are moving, if you're fully alert, I can't do it. Some of you... <laughs> Ay, hallelujah. Push again. Uh, that, that's the topic that I have for this morning. Push again. Adam fall into a deep sleep. God did it. And the Bible said, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Ayabashanda. He put him in a deep sleep and cut him. Do you think Adam would have allowed God to cut him if he was fully awake? Some of y'all need a spirit. No, don't say that, Sarah. Anesthesia. No. Be still. Some of us are busy, but it ain't in the right thing. Busy, but it ain't God. Busy. Busy. You're so busy, but unproductive. I was in, amen. God hit me one morning. He hit me one day. Y'all, he hit me. One day I was here in my home. And I kept saying, I'm so busy. I'm busy, busy, busy. And God said, Sarah, don't let satan keep you busy but unproductive don't let satan keep you busy that you lose focus and that never make no sense to me because i mean god what satan keep me busy how can satan keep me busy all right so let me break that down for you so Latoya, have you ever said to yourself get up and say i'm gonna pray i'm gonna go into prayer I'm going to go into prayer. I, I got to go pray. I got to something. You, you know, you got to go pray. And you said, I got to go pray. But you said, wait, you see, let me go spread that bed first. Uh, then you look and you say, wait, let me wash the dishes first. And then you say, wait, I got to run. The, I got to run to the post office first. Amen. And, you, and then you then you say to yourself, I, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. Amen. Praise God. The enemy does everything. Show you everything what you feel like and should be doing except what god wants you to do before you know it sister latoya by the day end you ain't pray yet so you become unproductive because the thing that you should be doing the most that would make you productive have you ever go in an office all right let me break it down real natural now have you ever go in an office, amen, and see somebody desk? It's piled up with all kind of stuff, but nothing got done. They have not finished one thing. They are tapping a little bit here, then they go in another file and tap into a little bit there, and then they go in another file, and nothing is finished. The point is, you got to get something done. And when you get something done, you become productive. Now, in a spiritual walk with God, I'll know you ain't praying because you don't rent to the post office. You don't go to Walmart. You don't, you don't, I'm talking about where I was. 
I was so busy and God had to stop me and said, don't let Satan get you so busy that you are not productive. And before you know it, you ain't pray yet and the day is finished. Oh my God, help the church. I have to put you to sleep then. So he put Adam in a deep sleep, right? Bible said he put him in a deep sleep. I'm reading this scripture. I'm going to put this Bible back together. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept. He slept and he took one of his ribs. If Adam had got that cut, <laughs> the anesthesia, God been doing anesthesia, an, we call it anesthesia. God been, been doing those stuff. Epidural ain't just come in. Bible said there's nothing new under the sun. Y'all thought epidural just got kicking. Y'all thought anesthesia. Y'all thought that these doctors, they're so wise. God is the doctor. God is the great physician. He's the all-powerful, all-wise, all-knowing God. He been doing that. The first surgery that ever performed in the Bible was God performing it on Adam. That was the first surgery. Hello. Adam went into surgery. <laughs> Oh, glory to God. He cut him. Put him under. Can you imagine him getting cut, kicking and moving all over the place? What a cut. He positioned him. Some of you, God has already positioned you. But you're so busy that you're stepping out of position and don't even know it. You think you know what's best for you so much. You don't understand that you step out of position. Some of you God have put you under leadership. Under persons to feed in your spirit. Some of you glory to God you're here on Rise and Command today. Because God said I'm going to use this woman of God to help you give birth to what I need you to get to. Some of you are at Temple of Restoration or each ministry. Because God said, I got to put you under the right leader. And it ain't got nothing to do with their age. I put a word in their belly. They're carrying your... Listen, some of you are connected to people because they're carrying your destiny. They're carrying... They're carrying something in something in them. Amen. To get into you. Something is in them that is going to help you get to you what you need to get to. And some of you are disconnecting yourself from the wrong people. Good God Almighty help the church. Some of you are staying on. I tell them in church the other day. I said, listen to me. Hear me now. You can come and rise and command your day. You can come and periscope. Amen. Every day and listen to me. But there's a difference when you get in the church. Because in listen, anybody that knows how God uses me. And I said God because I can't do this by myself. Sister Doreen, I will be preaching. And in the midst of preaching, God sent me to show me somebody. In the midst of preaching and teaching, God, sometimes God open up your life like a book before me and show me everything, where you've been, where you're coming from, where you're going, what you've been doing. I mean, he opened it. There's a difference when you get to the hospital. There's a difference when you get in the house of God. There's a difference when you get, I don't care how much time you watch rise and command you there. It will never impact you in the fullness until you get in the house. There's over 300 of you all right now, maybe more. And I can't see everybody, amen, like I would like to because, God, and somebody, I, I said I because it's not me. I'm not putting the focus on me. What am I saying? I said God is a spirit and God needs somebody to use. So God will have a woman or a man of God in your life. Because when a woman go to the hospital, she no longer depend completely on herself to bring the baby. She needs help. 
She needs somebody to tell her, you can do it. Push a little bit more. She needs somebody to cut the right place. She needs somebody to pull that baby out. She can't do it by herself. Stop sitting on home. You can't do it by yourself. Get in church. Sunday morning is so crucial. Sunday morning, amen. Come like the meeting. Amen. Sunday morning. Sun, you know what Sunday morning is like? The Bible said every now and then the angel will come down and trouble the water and the person that step in it first that's what sunday morning is like sister latoya sunday morning is different from any other time i'm not saying go to church on sunday alone but i'm saying how can you stay home on a sunday morning when it, if it's not something that you cannot help because i know sometimes some people can't help it why they didn't they weren't in church but if you are home laying down watching tv talk about i'm gonna watch joel smith you ain't never joel joel smith joel what is his name i don't even remember his name. it's not the same there is a greater impact when you get to church i'll be preaching i'll be preaching sister amen praise god and while i'm preaching god stop me in the midst of preaching Give me the right song, the right prophecy, the right word for the person. Minister to them and go back to preaching. It happens to me all the time. God don't have pastors in the church for nothing. God don't sanction, ordain and place a man of God in the house for no reason. Ekoroboko shandala bahaya. Adam was in the garden when he could have been anywhere in the world where God created. But God said, in the God, where did Eve come forth from? In the garden. Bible said he took one of his ribs, closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from Adam made he a woman and brought her unto him. Watch this. Julie, it's in you. God got to get it out of you. And then he's going to bring it back to you. If God get it out, he'll bring it back. Some of you, glory to God, if you just let some things go. And when it's the right time, God will bring it back. We are out of place. Some of us are out of place. We're out of place in God. We're out of place in the church. We're out of place. And that's why you ain't bringing forth in the fullness. I'm getting ready to teach the fivefold ministry. Amen. And the purpose of the church. I'm getting ready to teach that in Bible study tonight. I'm at fact, I got to go study a little bit more. Woo! Watch this. And the Lord God caused Adam to go to sleep. Get the rib out. He said, Adam, there's something I need outside of you. I was a backslider for three and a half years about I was running from God in the club. And God standing in the club, Sister Susan. Y'all like to see me dance. Me been a dance. I just changed partners. Y'all don't understand why I moved the way I moved. Because some people don't even understand me. I've been a warrior long before I start singing warrior A. Oh God, I got to pull up this song for them this morning. Something is on the inside of you, but I got to get it out. So what God did, God took the rib out of Adam, sealed Adam back up. God don't cut you and leave you bleeding. Some of you are hurt and you get hurt and you leave the church. And you said, me now go back at church. And your home with the cutter bleed out. God cut Adam. He cut him in the garden. And stitch him back up. Some of y'all think you just. I tell you, the surgery, surgery started with God. God performed surgery and take it and sew it back up. All that's been going on. That's not the wisdom of man. That's wisdom of God. God cut him. Close back up the flesh. Y'all see your long surgery going on? Some of y'all, when you're going into surgery, say, Lord, you perform the surgery. Because if God cut you, he won't leave you bleeding. He will stitch you back up. He cut Adam. Some of y'all need to get over the past. 
Get over the hurt. Get over why you backslide because it was a pastor, it was a leader, it was a sister, it was a brother. Get over it. God don't cut you and leave you bleeding. God don't bruise you and leave you. And God don't cut you for nothing. If God allow it to happen, it's because something is in the inside of you that God has to get out. So he cut him. And then he, all this time, you know, oh God, carry him. The seal is the evidence of the cut. The seal, good God, don't go there. I got to get off. I can't, carry on. you ain't going to keep me on here till after seven. Leave me alone. Praise the Lord Jesus. The seal is the evidence. The scar is the evidence. Amen. The hurt is the evidence. All that was a, a God, listen, what you've been through was not meant to keep you locked down. Some of us been through some stuff and we're still on lockdown, still home weeping over it, still home and get over it. God said, I didn't allow that to happen to keep you bound. That's just an evidence, amen, to your testimony. That's just the evidence that when folks see you preaching, teaching, and they don't even know where the anointing come from. They don't see the glory, but they don't know half the story. Sometimes, glory to God, Sister Julie, if they ever know what this girl been through. See me on here preaching, teaching, speaking in tongues, and God is using me. And you say, well, oh, this, that, 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 running. If you only knew some of my testimony, I can't share it. I got to take them to the grave. Some things I've been through, I cannot tell nobody. I got to keep that between me and Jesus. Some people see you, but they don't know the hell. I run from Jesus till I couldn't run no more. You think I was ready to come back to church when I come back? I baptized at 17. And when I got to foreign, I see what foreign like. I, I break out. My mother was in Jamaica. My dad, I had done run away from my dad house. Months shortly after I moved in my, with my dad, I ran away because of reasons. I won't go into details because I'm not going to put him out there like that. But I ran away from my, my dad's house. And let me tell you something, saints of God. When I came back to God, I was not ready to come back. All the backsliders out there, I've been a backslider. I've been clubbing. I drive from Fort Lauderdale to, I mean, from Miami to Fort Lauderdale searching for a club. Hear me? I drink one night till I get so drunk. I don't know. In the morning was an ambulance downstairs for me. And I still this day try to remember. How did I get downstairs to open the door. To get the ambulance. The people from the ambulance in the room. Because I felt like I was dying. I was so drunk. I got up. I drink. Amen. Let me tell you something. I, I want. I, I'm a, I'm a, you see me. I'm very transparent. I be real. Because I like realness. And I like real people. I don't like. I can't stand fakeness. I, I was so stressed out one day. Me and my friends went to the club. And so they bring the liquor, so I drink. I drink all different kind of liquor. When I was going home, I was so drunk. I was throwing up through the window. Yeah, this same person, yes. This same girl that God clean up. I was wretched and undone. I was a no good fornicating doing all kind of stuff and god god did it so when you see me preaching and see me teaching and see me prophesying and see me speaking in tongues and see people blessing me shut your mouth because you don't know and i'm, I'm not talking about y'all you know because y'all ain't saying nothing about me i'm not talking about y'all i'm not some people don't know what you've been through Susan, when I get up in the morning, all about shut up. Sister Doreen, I was going to aim and I feel like I was going to die. I remember calling 911 for the ambulance, but I cannot tell you all up to today. I, I was laying on the bed Saturday morning thinking about it and I was trying to figure out, Sarah, how did you get downstairs? I remember laying upstairs in my cousin room and I, I still ask myself, how did I get downstairs to open the door? How did they get in the house? Amen. By the time they got me to the hospital, I was stringed up on Ivy trying to get those substance outside of me. I was about to die. 
I run from God so much that one day I was walking into work and I felt the spirit of death. I felt death following me. When I turn on and look, Sister Latoya, amen, praise God, I didn't see nobody, but somebody was following me and I felt death. And God said, you got to come and serve me. He said, I, I God had to tell me, listen, you're going to have to sit down without a man. And fight and, and sit in me until I bless you. Sit down in me and keep your body from fornication. Sit down in me and keep your body clean, holy, and acceptable unto me, God. Don't let the nails fool you, the eyelash fool you. It's in me. It was always in Adam. It's not out here. It's in him. Listen, let me tell you something. I believe in modesty to the teeth. I believe a Christian should be modest in your dressing. Modest in, in, in the very makeup you wear. Don't overdo it. Modest in the jewel. Be modest. Don't overdo nothing. But it's really inside of you. And listen. I run from Jesus. A backslide. I run. Amen. I remember one night I stand in the club, Sister Doreen. Amen. Praise God. And the Holy Ghost said to me, you know, sister, you don't belong here. I look around. On the what? I said, God, talk to me in the club. I said, you don't belong here. And when I came back, Sister Sid, to church, I'm going to let y'all go now. I like to be real with people. Because some people see people preaching, prophesying, teaching, and don't know, amen, that there's something that that person been through to be where they are. That thing don't happen overnight. That anointing don't come overnight. And anointing ain't no inheritance. Somebody ain't dead left. Give me that. That comes through suffering. That comes through pain. That comes through obeying God. That comes to sitting under God's hand and said, don't move. And when I wanted a boyfriend and wanted somebody, I mean, I, I had a one bedroom living by myself. Could I invite who I want in and who I want out? But God tell me, Sister Dorian, he said, you're going to have to wait on me till I give you a husband. Sit down and serve me. Stop messing up. Stop doing this thing. Get up. Can I be real this morning? Something is on the inside of you that God is trying to get out. He said to me, you're going to have to sit down. Keep your body from fornication. He said, you're going to have to sit down without a man. Because some of us are like what I used to be. You feel like you, you can't be alone. You got to have somebody next to you. You got to have somebody in your life. Adam was alone when God cut him and get Eve, the rib, out of him. You think God was just trying to show a man that you got to cleave to a woman. And when you find your wife, you become one twain. No, God showing, uh, showing us that I had something in Adam that was going to produce because a woman carry a womb. A womb carry a baby. A womb is able to produce more and multiply. God's purpose for Eve was multiplication because he had the duck multiplying. He had, amen, the, amen. Everything was bringing after its own kind except man. Adam couldn't bring after his own kind without Eve because he had the womb to produce a seed after the own kind. God wanted man on earth. God wanted a nation. So God said, I'm going to do this. <laughs> we missed it. A lot of us missed it. A lot of us missed it. Y'all think it was just about a wife? Y'all think it was just about Adam getting a wife? Why God cut him and bring Eve? Eve's purpose was greater than the bedroom. He's per woman of God. Come on. Single woman. Let me talk to you. You have a greater purpose than the bedroom. You have a greater purpose in you, amen, than cleaning the house and cooking. There's a great, there's something that God wants to get out of you, his glory. He gave Eve, Adam, Eve, because God said, you have to bring after your own kind. 
He tell everything, multiply, go, go, multiply, go produce. So watch this. Adam wound is in the spiritual to bring forth Eve. But Eve womb is in the natural to bring forth all these others. You had Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, you had Cain, Eve, bring Cain and Abel, and Abel present a sacrifice to God. Worship start long time in the God. There's so much revelation that God's giving me this morning for you people of God. So listen, there's a greater purpose. I didn't get to finish Revelation chapter 12, but the morals of the story in chapter 12 of Revelation is that the devil showed up trying to make the woman lose her baby, the purpose. And God had to work it out. I will go back to Revelation 12 another day. So I run from God, Sister Doreen. I ran. I clearly will never forget getting on a bus to pay my phone bill when I felt God. And I said, look around. I said, no, this cannot be the anointing because I was too messed up. I was too far gone, I thought, to come back to the Lord. But God said, listen, there's a greater purpose in you, Sarah. I have something in you bigger I never saw myself here, but God saw it. So God said, you running, but I'm, a great, I'm calling you. And I came back by force. And I surrendered and I healed it. You see some anointing that you have, the anointing on your life, it, take, it comes by yielding and obeying. Trials testing. Oh God. Oh my God. And this is. I, I'm going to wrap this up now. But listen. The morals are, are the, the. The place where God show me. While this theme push again drop in my spirit is god said you gotta praise again that means i started up by saying some of you don't feel like you even have the strength left but but listen get up one more time try one more time do it again one more time and God is going to help you. God is going to help you. God is going to help you if you push again. Somebody on here, you want to give up not only on life, but the ministry, the purpose that God give you. All y'all with your book, your dream book, your, your, your vision book, you don't write out everything. You have the whole thing write out. But you close the book and you think the chapter is over. <laughs> you thought it's over. You thought it's over. You close the book. You close the chapter. But you don't get to close the chapter because you ain't writing the book anyway. God said, I am the author. I am the finisher of your fate. So when you think the chapter is done and when people think it's over in your life, God said, mm -mm, 